you can download most of your purchases with online banking through QuickBooks. This lets you get more accurate data into QuickBooks and minimize the data you need to enter. Click Banking to access your downloaded transactions. QuickBooks shows you a list of downloaded transactions here. Each one of these lines represents a different instance in which you spent or deposited money into your bank or credit card account. When a transaction is first downloaded, it goes into full review. This is a kind of waiting room for transactions because while they're in full review, they don't count towards any of your account balances and you won't see them on reports or financial statements. Your job in this window is to enter more details about each transaction and then add them so that they affect your reports and financial statements. Let's take a closer look at this transaction. Here we see when the transaction took place. If the transaction is a record of you spending money, you'll see how much you spent in this column. And if you received money, you'll see how much you deposited in this column. But your financial institution also sends a little extra information called bank detail. This usually tells you who the transaction was with. It's usually a good idea to enter a payee if QuickBooks doesn't do it for you automatically. The company we paid isn't on any of our lists, so type its name into the payee field and click Add. Then click Save. Notice that QuickBooks adds the same payee name to other transactions further down the list that were with the same vendor. Right now, QuickBooks thinks this transaction is for other business expenses. It's usually a good idea to be more specific than that, though. These categories appear on a special list called the Chart of Accounts. Don't let this accounting term confuse you. It simply means your list of categories. Select an account or category that best describes what you paid for. Tax-deductible business expenses, which appear on your profit and loss, are a special type of account called an expense account. But occasionally you may need to record the purchase of a new vehicle or some equipment, which is a fixed asset type. Or you might make a payment to the owner, which you record with this equity type account. If you don't know how to categorize something, ask your accountant. But in most cases, it's quite straightforward. For instance, we paid for office supplies, so we'll use this office supplies expense account to categorize it. QuickBooks assigns the same account to other transactions with the same payee. If you don't want QuickBooks to do that, though, change the setting here. If you download a transaction that you've already recorded manually, the button here will read Match instead of Add. That lets you match a downloaded transaction to a transaction you've already recorded manually. This is a new transaction, though, so click Add, and the transaction goes into QuickBooks. We can look it up just like any other transaction. Click the search button, and here's the transaction we just added. As we recorded that transaction, QuickBooks memorized all the things that we entered and applied them to other transactions from the same vendor. You can still click in the field and override those details though. But we don't need to, so we'll click Add. Now we've added a second transaction and barely had to do anything at all. Anytime you spend money with an electronic funds transfer, debit card, credit card, or really anything that's not a check, you can download it directly from your bank or credit card company and add it into QuickBooks.